Hello learners, hope you are doing well. Welcome back to our channel ML4 Analytics and welcome to this playlist Tax OTC. So this is the fourth video of this playlist and continuing uh, to our previous video, like I said that we will be covering the table functions. So in this video, I will talk about two other functions which are mostly used in table fun as table functions which are related and related table. So I uh, will talk about different scenarios where you can use these functions. So let's get started. So friends, we are now on the Power BI desktop and uh, I have opened a demo for you. So before we begin with the related and related table command, uh, if you have uh, seen our previous video uh, which was related to the filter function. So I, in that introduction to table functions, I started with the filter function. So there is one important point which I wanted to talk about the filter function before we proceed further. So let me just take that example for you. So friends, I have switched to the table view. So uh, I have opened one measure for you, uh, which we discussed in the last video also. So the scenario which I'm talking about for the filter command is that, suppose if we have two conditions uh, or more than one condition in filter command. So we learned that uh, we can put all those conditions inside the and and function. So you can pass on multiple conditions using comma in the and condition. So more than one condition can be placed like this. Another way can be we can use the nested filter functions. So I built one table using nested filter functions. So I just wanted to show you this particular scenario and uh, let me just open that table. So uh, here you can see the table function, uh, the table I have created. So it basically contains a nested filter function. Uh, so there is this particular filter function and there is the outer filter function. So in the inner filter function, we are filtering out the uh, products which are belonging to model name mountain bike socks. And then in the outer filter function, we are using the dim product color equal to white. So in this way, we can also use the nested filter functions. Now, what's the advantage of that? So suppose uh, if uh, you would like to use such conditions where one condition is more selective than the other. By selective, I mean that if you have very few rows, suppose five to 10 rows for mountain bike socks. So you will place that condition in the innermost filter. The reason we will do like this is because uh, we will get very less rows and on top of that we will apply the outer filter. So this will make the process very fast. Now if you do vice versa, suppose you are placing this white condition inside that the white, there would be many products which are of color white, suppose thousands of products. So that, that condition wouldn't be more selective as this one. So it will return thousand rows then on top of that it will apply this particular filter. So that would degrade the performance a little bit compared to this condition. So this will be more faster than the other one. So this was the scenario uh, which I wanted to discuss with you before we proceed with the related and related table. So now let's switch to the related and related table functions. So friends, uh, related and related table functions, they are basically both used to uh, fetch data from one table in the other table in case of calculated columns. And the prerequisite that is that we should have a relationship between two tables, right? So that the relationship can be one to many or many to one. So in case of like one to many, suppose you want uh, uh, many side tables. Suppose there is a sales table, which is the many side table and there is a uh, one side table, which is the product table. So suppose you want to bring the product color or product name inside the sales table. So you are bringing the value from the one side to the many side. So in that case, you will use the related function. And vice versa, if you want to do some aggregation on the one side from the many side, so then you will use related table function. So let's see a few uh, measures or, or calculated columns which I have created. Uh, we'll just see. So let's begin with the calculated column first. So let me switch to the dim product category table. So I have switched to the data tab and let me select the dim product category table. So in this table, we have I have created two calculated columns. So first one is the product count. Okay, so here you can see that I have used the count rows and related table function. So uh, the scenario is that I want to get the number of products for each product category. So what I will do is uh, in order to access uh, the DIM product table, I need to use the related table function. Otherwise I cannot access. If you directly write the DIM product inside the count rows, you will get an error or you won't uh, see the uh, table list in the IntelliSense. So, unless you write the related table and then inside you can see all the uh, tables which are directly related to the product category or indirectly related to the product category table. So if we, if we just switch to the relationship view, I'll just show you. 
Okay, so now here you can see that the dim product category table has a one to many relationship with product subcategory and product subcategory has a one to many relationship with the dim product table and then in turn the dim product table has a one to many relationship with the fact internet sales table, right? So now again switching to the data tab where we were seeing the dim product category table. Let me select that again. Okay, so uh, let us come back to this particular uh, code. So here I have used the related table to get the uh, dim product to access the dim product table and then we have taken the count rows. So count rows basically takes the count of all the rows uh, corresponding to this particular product category. So like this we can get the count of the products. Now there is another calculated column sales amount. In this case this is again uh, an example of a related table function. So what if I want to see the sales amount for each product category. So this will be the code I, I will use related table to get the to get the access of fact internet sales table then I will perform the calculation to calculate the sum and then uh, sumx function will do the sum. So in this way we will get the sales amount for each product category. Now let us look at the examples of related. So let me switch to the dim product table. Okay, so now I have switched to the dim product table and I have selected this particular uh, I have selected this particular column which I have created as a calculated column. So here what I have done is what if I want to see the product categories for all the product inside the dim product table. So I have used related function. When you write this function, you will get the access of all the one side table which are connected to the product uh, dim product table. So uh, I am fetching the English product category name corresponding to each product. So now you can see the values for each product, the product category values for each product. So in this way, you can fetch the values to the many side from the one side using the related function. So in this way, we can use both the related and related table function inside the calculated column. Now let us see also some scenarios in which we can use these functions inside the measures. So let me just switch to one measure. So I have opened this particular measure. This is the same measure which we used earlier also. So here you can see the related command. So what we are doing is we are you know filtering this fact internet sales table based on the ding product color. So unless you write, write the related you cannot access the one side function. So if you want to place this filter on based on uh, dim product and the color column you need to write, write this particular expression inside the related function then only you will be able to access the one side dim product table for the fact internet sales table and the other, other condition is basically related to the sales table only so there is no need to write the related function so in this way you can write the related inside the code remember one thing like uh, the related and related table functions they themselves are not iterators, they don't iterate over a table, but they need to be placed inside an iterator function. Okay, so you need to have a row context. So we'll talk about row context or evaluation context later because those are uh, little advanced concepts. Uh, so as we move slowly and gradually, uh, we'll talk about evaluation context also and we'll understand them deep. But here you can just remember that related and related table function can only be used inside an iteration. So here the sumx function is an iterator. We already discussed that in the earlier video. So this is iterating over the fact internet sales and then it is fetching the value corresponding to each sales from the team product table. So this is one way of using the related function. Let us see another use case. Okay, so this is another use case. I have created one more measure to explain you how we can use the related table function inside the measure. So uh, this is a little complex function. So maybe you will take time to understand what this function is doing. So let me explain you. So to understand this function, you can basically keep this thing in mind that whenever there are nested functions, so you basically first the innermost function will be evaluated in general in DAX and then the outermost function will be evaluated. In general, this is the case for most, most of the functions inside the DAX except calculate and calculate table. Their order of evaluation is different. We'll talk about those functions later as we move on in this particular series. So coming to this measure, let us see how it is getting evaluated. So you can see that this is the outermost function sumx. So the first argument of sumx is this particular filter command. So remember uh, sumx, the first argument of the iterator function like sumx, averagex, maxx, they are always a table or a table expression. So they need to return a table. 
So let us first evaluate this particular command. What this command is doing? So uh, now inside filter we have placed another command, uh, which is, which is the table name. So filter, as you wrote, we have already discussed that it accepts the first argument as a table and then the condition to filter that particular table. So now you can see that we are filtering the DIM product category table based on the count rows of the DIM product table. So basically uh, what we are saying, saying is that give me those product categories which have the count of product greater than 10 under those categories. Okay. So we are counting the uh, number of rows inside the DIM product table and we are checking that whether it is greater than 10 and we are returning those categories only. So this filter command will return those categories which have the number of products greater than 10 inside them. So now uh, remember we talk about the related function inside of DIM product category table. Let's switch to that. Okay. So now I have switched to the DIM product category table just to explain you the first argument of the SUMX function. So remember that we took the product count for each product category. So now you can see that all the counts are greater than 10. So in this case, it will return all the four rows for the first expression of the SUMX function. So now let's switch again to that particular measure. Okay. So now uh, in this first condition, the table has been returned with the four rows. Now for each row, this SUMX will iterate and evaluate this expression. Now, as you can see that this expression is nothing but it is calculating the sum of sales amount for each BIM product category. So it is fetching all the rows related to this product category using related table. So we have to use related table. Otherwise, we will not be able to access the fact internet sales table. So and then it is picking all the rows and then taking the sum of those rows and then returning us the uh, total sales amount for each BIM product category. And then on top of that, we are summing up all the sales amount for all the rows returned. So basically we will be getting the total sales amount. So uh, this was a little complex way to explain the total sales amount which can be you know returned in this sim simple expression also uh, just to show you. So this simple expression will also give us the same number and based on that uh, complex expression we will also give us the same number because we, uh, we are taking all the product categories which are greater than having the count of products greater than 10 and uh, since all the categories are having the product counts greater than 10 so that's why all the sales amounts will be returned so uh, in this way i have just plotted that particular measure here so you can see this is the simple one and this is the complex one uh, so both numbers are the same with this we come to the uh, end of explanation of related and related table now before I end this video, uh, I just want to talk, talk about the important points which you need to remember about these two table functions. So let's switch to that. So in this case, uh, as I mentioned that related and related table are not iterators. They do not iterate over a function, but in turn they fetch the value from the one side or the many side depending on the condition. When the related function performs a lookup, it examines all the values in the specified table regardless of any filters that may have been applied. So basically when you are fetching the value from the, many, uh, from the one side to the many side, so it will perform kind of lookup. So it will bring all the values uh, to the many side. Coming to the another point, the related function needs a row context. As I mentioned that related or related table, they need to be placed inside an iterator. So that means the row context. So this term row context or evaluation context as, as I mentioned earlier also we will discuss later. You just now can remember that they need to be placed inside an iterator whether being as calculated column. So when you create a calculated column automatically there is a row context or automatically there is an iteration. So because for each row that expression is getting evaluated. So now coming to the next point a table scanning function such as SUMX gets the value of the current row uh, value and then scans another table for instances of that value. So the same uh, which I explained to you that SUMX function is an iterator. So it will iterate over each row of the table supplied to that SUMX function as a first argument and then it will calculate the second expression for each row. Another point the related table performs a context transition from row context to a filter context and evaluates the expression in the resulting filter context. So friend, this point uh, you can just keep in mind or you can just forget about this particular point though I have written here but we will uh, discuss it later when we talk about evaluation context because this is an advanced concept in DAX, the context transition or the evaluation context. So context transition we learn once we have completed the evaluation context. 
So the last point is that in general the order of execution order of nested functions or calls is that the innermost function is evaluated first then outer functions. So I already talked about this that the innermost functions are calculated in general first and then the outermost functions but this is different for the calculate functions and we'll discuss it later. So with this we come to the end of this video. Uh, we talked about related and related table functions and we discussed how we can use them in calculated column and the measures. So if you have any questions related to these two commands related and related table, you can put your questions in the comment section and I will answer your questions. So with this we come to the end of this video. In later videos we will talk about other table functions. So take care and goodbye.